Hey there, Oconiacs. I wanted to try something different in order to figure out who killed Ben Glenroy. I'm going to try an old trick from my friend, the cat in the hat. When you've mislaid a certain something, keep your cool and don't get hot. Calculatus Eliminatus is the best friend that you've got. Calculatus Eliminatus always helps an awful lot. The way to find a missing something is to find out where it's not. We will deduce who it could be by making educated guesses on who it's not. And through process of elimination, maybe we'll figure it out. Well, how will we calculate? In murder mysteries that are considered fair play, the guilty party must be introduced early in the season or early in the story. In season one, Jana was officially introduced in episode three. And in season two, Poppy didn't officially appear until episode six, but she did appear in the mind of Mabel, knitting with Cinda and Cindy in episode one. And her work with Cinda was talked about a lot. Technically, she was in the previous season, so there is some leeway she was introduced into the overall story. So we're looking for someone who hasn't appeared yet this season, but has appeared last season, or someone who has appeared this season so far. Also, the last two seasons, the killer seemingly had no direct tie to the victim, and we will try to take that into account. And lastly, if they seem as if they've had a big enough motive and have been too predominantly shown already this season, we're going to make the assumption that it's not them. Who poisoned Ben before going on stage? Or if that whole ideal was a jig and for one reason or another, it's not a valid question that we're going to try and answer. Only who could have pushed him down the elevator shaft. So let us calculate us, eliminate us using fair play rules, who's already appeared, and omitting who seems obvious. First, let's take out the trio. Another rule in fair play mysteries, the investigators can't be guilty, and I'll also give Detective Williams a pass. After that, Loretta, Cliff, Donna, Tolbert, and Kimber, and who cares, Dickie, they all have appeared quite a bit in these first three episodes and seem like obvious choices, so we're going to say it's not them. We should also remove Greg the Crazed Fan. Next, there are some people who I feel are too far removed to a point that I can imagine that they have any link to Ben from what themes appear this season with the Lighthouse and the Cobra. People like Cinda, Oliver's son Will, Oliver's doctor, Uma, and anyone else that works at the Aconia, like Leonard and Ursula. Those are the big major ones that's just really easy for me in this situation to say no. But we got to get into the nitty gritty. Who else is left? From the show, we have Jonathan, Bobo, KT, and Ty. Jonathan seems on the fringe of being obvious. So let's just drop him. The other three are iffy and not as much of a focus, so we're going to put a pin on them. But who else have we seen this season or may appear? Charles' girlfriend, Joy. She also mentioned Lucy, even though I love that character. I'm not sure we're going to see her this season. There was also Maxine the Critic and Detective Biwas. Someone else we haven't seen yet is Saz Pataki and Matthew Broderick's character who we don't know who he is, but at the very least, Matthew being the killer and not introduced yet, I feel would be a stretch. So we're going to leave Saz, Maxine, Detective Biwas, and Broderick out. That leaves us with Bobo, KT, Ty, Joy, Maxine. No, no, no Maxine. So that gives us Bobo, KT, Ty, and Joy. Biwas, the detective, I think would be too much like Detective Kreps from last season. That's why I'm leaving him out. Uh, Joy, I feel like she's a good suspect, but I think would be too much of a repeat of Jan. Maxine is interesting, but I feel like she was just a one and done character. She is a very interesting suspect. 
If she appears again, we'll talk about it, but for right now, I'm going to assume that she was not in the Arconia at the time of Ben's death. That leaves us with Bobo, KT, and Ty. And don't forget, Charles made the comment about another female character would be too obvious. They could be messing with us, calling our bluff, but let's take them at their word, and that would leave Bobo and Ty. And though I like the idea that the killer was not a part of the play and would not have a very obvious tie to Ben, something sideways, partially in there, Calculatus Eliminatus states that it would be likely one of these two. And though we don't have much to go on, Bobo said nothing to Charles when he asked about the hankies. He literally said nothing. So that could mean that he doesn't have it and Charles just focused too much on Kimber when she stated that she didn't have hers. We don't have enough information on Ty. He had a couple lines here and there, but it's not enough to get any real ID on, so I'm guessing the person most likely to be the killer is Bobo. But I don't know why. Maybe we'll try and figure that out after this next episode. But either way, do you think Bobo could be the killer? Did I forget anyone or discount a suspect too easily for your liking? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I think I'm going to try and do a watch long at midnight for the rest of the season and chat with people for a few minutes afterwards. That's if I can figure out how to go live. If you're interested in that or if you'll be awake, please let me know. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas and I'll catch you on the rooftop.